Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Good morning, good evening, good, good night, depending on which part of the world you are listening in from. I'm broadcasting from the UK out of my home into yours and welcome to my channel. If you like what you see, like what you hear, please subscribe, like and share. Um, today I'm talking about the vote. We're thinking about only next month and a lot of black people are a bit worried whether or not they're going to vote because people I've spoken to, they're so apathetic, they're so fed up. You know, they're kind of saying, what's the point? I don't want to vote, you know. And regardless of what you tell them, that seems to be the attitude. But you have to, you can't be predictable. The politicians are banking on black people not voting. In America, they actually put things in place to stop black people from voting. They, they create all kinds of obstacles. So when you're in a country where that isn't happening, you need to take advantage because regardless of how you think, things don't change. They do. When you think about polling tax, when you think about feminism, when you think about um, the low wage, you know, um, zero hours. What else was there? Immigration, the hostile environment, all of those things have got to do with individual people's votes. And what happens is, is that if you become apathetic and you can't be bothered, that is what the politicians are banking on. Remember when Trump said, I think it was in 2014 or something, he said he was actually glad that black people didn't come out and vote. Where they did come out and vote, they created obstacles. So, you know, there's a lot of reason, especially there's a lot of reasons why black people don't vote. Sometimes it's because they don't feel as though the candidate is going to represent their interests. I mean, you see a white candidate, you're kind of thinking, what does he know about me? What can he do for me? Is he really interested in me? That's why there was such a big turnout of African-Americans for Obama. Because he was black and they could actually identify with him. In the UK, we have white candidates, but it shouldn't, don't let it make a difference. Don't let it distort your judgment on whether or not, these bloody fireworks, on whether or not you decide to um, vote or not. I tell you something, it's really important. And this vote, more than any other vote, is important. Now, um, when we think about black men, and that's another thing, black men have been systematically denied the vote. Look how many of them are in prison. Look how many of them are in mental institutions. Look how many of them are in mental institutions, have criminal records, things that do not allow them to vote. Okay, if they've got a parking fine, I think, I think they could still vote. And I think some other civil um, crimes, they can vote. But the majority of them cannot vote. So you need to make up for those who can't vote and who would like to vote and who do not have the freedom to vote. You need to make up those numbers. So um, what am I saying here? I just want to go through. I'm going to let you know what's happening a bit in America so you can actually appreciate the fact that you have you have the right to vote but you know a lot of times it's got to do with the people you hang around with you know because if you hang around with people who are not really interested in politics and I know you can get fed up of Brexit but once you get interested in it it's quite fascinating whether it's fascinating because they're a load of bullshitters whether it's because they just tell lies whether it's because you just get frustrated whether you look at the way they behave and you think it's obnoxious when, you know, and that guy says, order, order. I mean, when you think about the way they go on, you can't, it's actually a big, it's a big joke. But the fact of the matter is that big joke affects your life. And a lot of times people, you know, a lot of times it's deliberate to throw people off. 
to make people think, oh, you know, I'm not going to bother. They're a load of arseholes. So excuse my French, but they're a load of hypocrites. They're a load of this. They're a load of liars. And those are the kind of things the politicians bank on, on you not going out. December the 12th, it'll probably be raining. It might even be snowing. But they're banking on black people not going out and voting. You've got to vote. Let me get back to this. So don't let it be a self-fulfilling prophecy, please. Let us not be predictable, please. Get involved with something. And that's what I was saying, you know, people you hang around with. I mean, at, at work, I've got a couple of people. They don't talk politics at all. They're not interested. You talk about, but they'll bloody vote. They'll vote. And they poo-poo it and they say, oh, you know, I'm not this and I'm not that. But they go and bloody vote. Guarantee. So, yeah, it does have a lot to do with the type of people you hang around with, whether or not you're inclined to vote or not. But if you're watching this video or, you know, at least share this video. So, you know, try to get the message out there. It's really, really important. Um, we cannot, you know, it will just make such a big difference. We can't guarantee who's going to get in. But at least you've made your stamp. You put your stamp there. You can say, in 2019, on the 12th of December, I decided to go out and vote to make a difference for my life, for my children's life, for, for my family's life, for jobs, for homes, for whatever it is. You're going to be at the mercy of those who do not give a toss about the working class or the middle class. That's who you're going to be at the mercy of if you don't vote. Okay, so, like I said, incarceration of black has been used as a form of voter suppression. They can't vote if they're in jail, can they? Uh, black candidates increase voter turnout. I've said that. Um, okay, this this is the America. This is how they stop black people from voting in America. Uh, President-elect Donald Trump at the Grand Rapids, Michigan, post-election rally on the December night thanked black voters who did not vote. The African-American community was great to us, he said. If they had any doubt, they didn't vote. And he continued, that was almost as good. He's taking the pee. He was glad they never went out and voted. And he says, those who don't vote because they have a little doubt, that gives them more votes. Unlike America, you cannot have your vote rejected because of ID. You don't need ID to vote. You just need to be registered. In America, a black citizen was 10 times as likely to have, been, to have his vote rejected as a white voter. It's just like racial profiling, those statistics, or stop and search. We need to take advantage of what little freedom we have and make up for those who cannot vote because they are in prison. I've said that. Um... Okay, in a place called Guilford County in the United States, where 30% are black and didn't have the requisite IDs, it meant that the turnout was down 85%. They've got this ID system, and a lot of black people don't have the ID system, and so they got turned away, so they couldn't vote, even though they went out to vote. So in Indiana... Once it became clear that black people could determine the outcome of an election, like when Barack Obama carried the state in 2008, the Republicans mobilised to cut off African-American access to the polls. You see? I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but it's done in a more subtle way. They're not going to cut off the polls. They're not going to do that. But they will word things and they will do things in their campaigns to make you think, what is the point? It's not about me. I can't be bothered. That is what all this is about. All these delays, all of this messing around is to put people off from voting. Not only black people must vote, working class, middle class. 
And don't vote for those people who you think you belong to. Some people, black people, because they have because they're house owners, those bloody fireworks, isn't it gone? What's today's date? Fifth of November. Oh no wonder. Gunpowder, treason and plot. Anyway, um, yeah, a lot of people who own houses, they think they were part of the middle class. They think they're all up there and they think, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to vote for the conservatives because I, you know, I, I don't mix with those people down there. You're going to be screwed. Anyway, let me just finish this. Similar to North Carolina, Indiana's GOP realised how essential early voting was to the black voter turnout. The Republican-dominated legislature mandated that counties with more than 325,000 residents could only have one early voting location unless approved on a bipartisan basis. The governor, Mike Pence, signed this into law in 2013. Once again, the targeting was clear. Only three counties in Indiana have more than 325,000 people and account for 72% of the state's black population. The result, as the Indianapolis Star reported, is that Marion County, including the state's largest city, Indianapolis, lost two of its sites and was reduced to only one early voting precinct, which was inaccessible Located downtown with no available parking, not surprisingly, by design, in the 2016 election, early voting in the county plummeted by 26%. So you see what they will do, I know and it's in America, to stop black people from voting. They don't do that in the UK. They can manipulate the vote. They can use subliminal messages to make you not vote. They can do things like that, but there's nobody that's going to be stopping you. I mean, they stop us indirectly. They stop our black men indirectly by flinging them in jails. And that's a lot of, that is, you know, it's another form of slavery in a sense, because it takes away all your rights. You don't have any rights. So all those people in jail, it's not just a question of them being in jail. It's a question of them not having any rights, not being in a position to make a difference not being able to have a say in what goes on with their family, their friends, their extended family, because they don't have a say. They're locked up in jail. So if you're free and you're single, it doesn't have to be single. That's just, I was just thinking of that song, Young, Free and Single. But or if, as long as you have the ability to vote, it's a very important that you do. And don't, you know, you know, black people for too long have been a bit lax, a bit lazy when it comes to voting. It's too cool, it's too wet, snowfall, all that kind of ism schism. Nobody did it this year, honestly. It's really, really important. Georgia is also adept at policing black citizens who dare to vote. In 2010, when African Americans in Brooks County organised a massive voter turnout, drive and elected the first majority black school board in its history, the Secretary of State, Brian Kent, had a dozen African-American activists and a school board members arrested and over the course of a long grueling four-year period dragged through the courts. Although in the end there were zero convictions for voter fraud, there was a chilling effect as lives were ruined jobs lost and a hard lesson on the cost of voting made abundantly clear. Then in 2014, Kemp put his crosshairs on the New Georgia Voter Project, an organisation determined to register some of the 700,000 African Americans in the state who were not yet on the voter rolls. When the group signed up more than 100,000 to vote, Kemp immediately took the airwaves, insisting, we're not, we're not going to put up with fraud. That claim, spoken often and wrongly by Republican stalwarts, from Chris Kobach to Donald Trump, 
is the lie used to justify voter suppression techniques. Yet, as the law professor Justin Levitt has documented between 2000 and 2014, there have only been 31 cases of voter identification fraud out of 1 billion votes. 31 out of 1 billion votes. Kemp in his own way acknowledged the lie when behind closed doors he explained to a group of fellow Republicans Democrats are working hard, re registering all these minority voters. If they can do that, they can win these elections in November. He therefore used the power of his office to launch a very public multi-year investigation that would once again aim to intimidate and dissuade African Americans from registering to vote. In 2016, pummeled by voter suppression in more than 30 states, the black voter turnout plummeted by 7% for the GOP. That was an effective kill rate for America. It was a lethal assault on democracy. So my friends, regardless of race, gender and colour, exercise your freedom to vote on the 12th of December. And that's all I've got to say. Bye bye.